Hi friends, and thanks for tuning in. In this video, I'll cover the basics of an Amazon Virtual Private Cloud, or VPC. If you don't already know, Amazon has a massive global footprint with regions and availability zones all around the world, shown here. And as you can imagine, there's hundreds of thousands, even millions of customers using AWS every day. They're using EC2 instances and S3 buckets, databases, and so on. Check out my AWS playlist for more on those if you're interested. You don't want to just throw your resources out there with all the other millions of resources, a soup of servers, and so on. Instead, you want your own little private slice of the overall AWS pie. And that's basically what a virtual private cloud or VPC is. It's your own private cloud or network within the cloud, within AWS. And it's how your resources are isolated from everybody else's resources. If we go out to the AWS Management Console and navigate to VPC, you'll see that I have one here. When you create your AWS account, you get a default VPC, and then of course you can create others. And if you're familiar with creating an EC2 instance, those are basically your virtual servers in the cloud. I'll just quickly go through a couple of steps in the wizard to launch one. Just select this one and configure instance details. You'll see here, this is where you select that VPC. So if I were to go all the way through and launch this instance, it would live within our own little private network in AWS. Now with that little teaser, I will say networking is a huge topic. It can be quite complex. There's actually an entire specialty certification that you can get for networking in AWS. So there's a lot to it. But for this video, I really just want to focus on the big picture concepts, especially for those of you who don't have a lot of networking in your background. I actually heard an analogy once that compared networking in AWS to a parking lot which I found really helpful for understanding the core concepts. So let me share that with you. Here's a parking lot, you're all familiar. And outside of the parking lot is the whole world, AWS world, let's say. So the fence or border around the parking lot can be thought of as your VPC. It separates your resources from the rest of the resources in AWS. Up at the top here, we have traffic coming in from the outside world and traffic going out to the outside world. In AWS networking terms, this would be an internet gateway. That's how your VPC talks to the internet. And then inside the VPC, we have logically separated areas. For our example, we're gonna say they're the left and the right of the parking lot. These are called your subnets in AWS networking terms. And generally they're gonna be used for different purposes. Now let's say that one subnet has a route or a route, depending on where you come from, to get out to the internet. If that's the case, this is a public subnet. The other side, the subnet that doesn't have the route to the internet, that's a private subnet. And that's the main distinction. So maybe on the public subnet, you put servers that would host public facing web pages. And in the private subnet, you would put your databases there. So there's that extra layer of security protecting from the outside world. Okay, hopefully that analogy was helpful for understanding the overall concepts of a VPC. Now let's combine that with knowledge of some of the things that you probably already know about the AWS infrastructure. First, we have a region. This represents a geographical location in the world, something like US West 1 or EU West 2, for example. Then within that, you have availability zones. These are basically data centers within that region and two or more per region, something like a US East 2A, 2B, 2C, and so on. Your VPC is tied to a single region and it spans two or more availability zones. And then going down one more level, we've got our subnets. Again, those different partitions of your VPC. These are tied to the availability zone. So you have subnets for the first AZ and more subnets for the second AZ. They're public and private subnets like we talked about. And again, to reiterate the main distinction there is that public subnets are accessible from the internet and private subnets aren't. And then within the subnets, that's where your actual resources live, your EC2 instances and so on. Flipping back to the console really quickly, when you go to create a new EC2 instance, just as an example, you'll choose the network, which is your VPC, and then you also choose the subnet within that. So in this example, there's three subnets within this particular VPC. Now let's talk about CIDR. No, no, not that kind of CIDR. Classless interdomain routing, which I refer to as CIDR, though some people pronounce it CIDR or even CEDR, but regardless, CIDR, this is the notation used for describing blocks of IP addresses. An IP address, of course, is kind of like your home address, but for a computer. 
It tells the world where to find you. If we go back to the console, here's an EC2 instance that I created previously. You'll see the IP address here of 172.31.36.213. This IP address comes from our CIDR block, which is assigned at the VPC level. So back to the diagram. Like I just said, the CIDR range is assigned at the VPC level, and this tells us how many IP addresses we can assign to things within that range. So in this diagram, we have six EC2 instances, which would take up six IP addresses. Then if we added some database instances, those would need IP addresses and so on. So we wanna make sure that we have enough addresses for all of the resources in the VPC. Back to the console. Again, we have this address here, 172.31.36.213. And you'll also see the VPC here. If I just open that up in a new tab, and look at the details of that and switch over to the CIDRs tab, you'll see 172.31.0.0 slash 16, which looks sort of the same, right? At least to start with, we've got the 172.31. Now there's a lot to CIDR ranges and addressing and such, but let me make it just really, really simple. There's a site called CIDR.xyz. Let me bring that up in a new window and I'll do a split screen here to make it easier to see. This is a really handy site to kind of help you visualize how these IP addresses work, how many you get, what your first address is, your last address, and so on. So over here, we're gonna be working with this CIDR block. And let's input that over here. So we've got 172.31.0.0 and then slash 16. So this tells us that the first usable IP here is 172.31.0.1 and last usable IP, 172.31.255.254, and that we have a total of 65,536 IP addresses that we can use within the VPC. So it's this slash 16 that's giving you that many. If you were to do something like a slash 24, you'll see that count drops. So slash 16 is giving you that 65,536. So looking at this instance that we saw earlier, here we've got the 172.31.36.213, and you'll see that falls within the first to last usable IP range here. And we obviously have plenty of IP addresses. We've got the 65,000 plus. We're only using one for this particular instance. So hopefully that makes things a little bit more concrete. Let me move back to the slides and cover just a few more concepts. We talked about the internet gateway that's at the VPC level and the fact that a public subnet has a route to it, which is what makes it public. It's accessible to and from the internet. The private subnet doesn't have that route. You can't get to it from the internet and you can't get out to the internet. But what if you do need to get to the internet for something, maybe to do updates or patching or download files or something like that? You still don't want the outside world getting in, but you need to get out for certain things. In that case, you wanna use what's called a NAT gateway NAT stands for Network Address Translation. Don't worry too much about that. Just know that you create a NAT gateway in your public subnet, and then you add a route from your private instance to it. Then you add a route from the NAT gateway to the internet gateway. So that's how you enable internet access for your resources in a private subnet. Okay, with those basics under our belt, let's do a quick discussion here of how to secure everything. We have network ACLs or access control lists and security groups. These are similar in that they both protect your AWS resources, but there's some key differences. A network ACL is basically a firewall that controls traffic in and out of a subnet. It's attached at the subnet level. You'll see that here in the diagram. It has rules for allow and deny, and those rules can only be used with IP addresses. So deny IP address from a known attacker, let's say. And then security groups, this is a firewall that controls traffic in and out of an EC2 instance. So down a level, as you'll see in the diagram. Here, you can only make rules for allow. So allow traffic from other AWS resources, let's say. And in addition to IP addresses, you can also include other security groups here. So those are the basics of the virtual private cloud or VPC and AWS. If you found this helpful, think about hitting that like button so it can spread to more people and also consider subscribing for other technical tutorials like this. Thanks so much for watching.